Hi everyone. Hi. Welcome back to our channel. Um, today we have a video for you mm. on musk based perfumes. Yes. We know that you've liked some of our kind of ingredients um, videos. Mm. So we thought we'd do musk today. Mm. Musk is an interesting one because there's musk in so many different perfumes. Oh my goodness, so many. Yeah. And, and not always what you'd realise either. Oh no, no, it's definitely. often used as a base note to kind mm. of fix the fragrance yeah. to the skin. Um, but also, it's quite misconce misconceived, isn't it? Yes, misunderstood yeah. poor musk. Because often when I've been in store, I've had people go to me, nothing too musky, nothing oh, too yeah. musky. Because they I'm need like, like a heavy fragrance. Mm, musk yes, equals you're like heaviness. kind of spiciness mm. and darkness. Um, but actually, that's not really traditionally no. how musk smells. So um, we will try and... Um, demystify musk. Yeah, demystify musk. And we've got three fragrances to show you. They are all very different, but they all are based around musk. Yeah. As we go along, we'll tell you how they're different. And yeah, a little and bit about the history of musk as well. Yes, because there is quite a lot of history, perfumery mm. history tied up with it, and um, where it used to come from is not where it comes from now necessarily. No. So let's start with the first one. Mm -hmm. um, I've got La Panthère by Cartier uh -huh. to show you. Um, this is a beautiful fragrance, um, fabulous bottle as it's well. Amazing. If you look closely on that bottle, you can see that there is the panther's face um, engraved inside the glass, which I think is a really stunning feature. Yeah. Um, La Panthère was launched in 2014. 14. Mm. Um, so it's a couple of years old now, but it's just an outstanding fragrance and it's quite powerful, this one. It is. Um, you have some gloss there, I'm going to yeah. spray. Um, one of the things that we notice about this is that it's got gardenia, which is yes. quite an animalic, sexy flower, mm. and musk. Um, a kind of reconstituted animal musk, interesting, yes. we'll tell you why, um, which also smells animalic and sexy. So it's got like a double whammy sexiness, this yes. fragrance. It's yes. powerful and it's arresting and it's yeah. definitely not for somebody who wants to be into the background and fade no. away, you want to be in the centre of attention. Yes. Um, the reason it's called Le Panthère, it means the panther. It does. And so the musk note in it is actually meant to smell like the panther's mm. fur, like you're stroking a panther's mm. fur. So it's a very animalic musk, mm. which probably leads us on to telling you where, where comes musk from. comes from originally, yeah. because it comes from an animal. Yeah, but not the panther. No, <laughs> not the panther. It, um, <laughs> it comes from a deer. It comes from a, a Tibetan musk deer. Yes. Um, which um, actually became endangered species. They're very cute and mm. small little deer, aren't oh, no. they? Yeah. But you had to kill the deer to get the musk from it. Yeah. So now, it, oh, well actually that's not strictly true. Apparently, I was reading this just the other day, yeah that you didn't have to kill the deer, but people were too lazy and they did anyway. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, they and, got the deer, you know, because if it, what happened is, God knows how someone worked this out, but the musk deer has a kind of sack underneath its private area <laughs> that it would spurt off. You know how a cat like sprays it yeah. for its territory but, and, and stuff, to attract, to attract a mate? mate. So it's very pheromonal. Pheromonal, sensual, mm. but I mean, on its own, it really, it makes you gag the smell. Like, it, it doesn't it? it in that actual raw musk, you smell it. smells a bit like poo. Yes. And so people would cut off this sack or extract the, mm. the secretion mm. from it and put it in perfume. This is in like the Middle Ages. Oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, this, has been, this is an old, old ingredient yeah. that, that has been used in centuries and centuries worth of perfume. Mm. It was actually only, believe it or not, in 1979 yeah. that it became illegal to use natural animal musk, which mm. is why nowadays perfumers always reconstitute it, i.e. they make synthetics uh, yes. musk. Um, and you know good because poor deer oh yes you know. and i mean you know you don't want to be worried that there's any kind of animal product in no. the perfume that you're spraying on yourself exactly. so yeah but it does in this fragrance what mathilde Varont has done who is the perfumer, very clever it's very very clever because she has actually made a very faithful version very. of animal mask, animal mask. and um, although it's done synthetically it smells like a kind of old world perfume yeah yeah 
really does. It's a great fragrance. If you haven't tried this, do go and, and try it. But mm. my recommendation is um, spray it on your skin and leave it for a while. Yeah. Because well, this is one that I tend to spray right at the start of when I'm getting ready, not just before I'm leaving the house. Because it's, uh -huh. it's really, really powerful. Yeah. So I have to let it dry down a little mm. bit on the skin mm -hmm. before I, I go out anywhere. Yeah. Um, I did, <laughs> there's body products as well for this and I do have the whole range in my house and uh, once I went to dinner um, at some friend's house and I had shower gel, oh, Le Panthère, oh, no. I had body cream, Le Panthère, I covered myself in the eau de parfum. You were literally a panther. I was literally a panther <laughs> and I was at this person's house for dinner and unfortunately, I mean, you can't normally smell perfume on yourself but you even could. I could smell La Panthère over and above the stew or the casserole yeah. whatever it is she'd cooked and I was like I'm really sorry but my perfume is completely interfering with the wafts and the smells of yeah. your dinner yeah um, it is powerful but it is a great example of an animalic mm. musk fragrance mm. um on the other hand musk can also be very um clean and soft yeah, absolutely. Um, and like a white musk smell. So the, the traditional synthetic musks are white musks. Yeah. And they do, they're, they're soft and skin-like and, yeah. and smooth and powdery sometimes. As an example of um, musk on the other end of the scale, um, we have musk, just simply called musk, by Etro. Um, Etro is an Italian fashion brand that also do fragrance. Um, and this one, like I said, is completely different. Let me give a spritz here. Mm. Um, we don't talk about Etro that much, actually. It's no. not a, a very well-known perfumery brand, but there's some beautiful fragrances in the range. Mm. Thank you very much. So, oh yeah, completely different now. Completely mm. different. Um, I mean, I was a massive lover of White Moss by the Body Shop. I think oh, we talked about this in the previous I video. Wore that so as well. it does have mm. like a, a, obviously a much more mm. um, sophisticated vibe on that. Um, but spray some of my skin. the idea with this is that it smells clean that it smells um, comforting, mm. crisp, like fresh linen. Yeah, um, yeah, it does. It has a lot of um, notes that are kind of um, f fresh. So like verbena, <laughs> mm. you know, verbena is yeah, the like kind a of herb, herb. but lemony. Um, and it also has rose, but a very soft and clean mm. um, rose, I think, isn't it? it? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to, I was actually trying to think about a floral note, but I can't necessarily smell rose, but there is something yeah. gentle and delicate gentle. And, and sort of white flowery in mm -hmm. there. Um, it's really nice, actually, but it's it's completely, what we should have done is sprayed this first. Yeah, because <laughs> all I can smell is La Pantera. Yeah, now. yeah. The idea with this, because mm. um, Etro have a lot of fragrances, and they quite encourage like layering. Oh, okay. And so like the musk you could put on as a base and then put something else on top. But you could do that, you don't have to just do it with an Etro fragrance. Mm. If you wanted a kind of nice, um, soft white musk mm. base to your fragrance, you could mix that with something else. Good idea. Mm. Okay, so completely different types yeah. of musk. Um, also, I wanted to share with you um, the brand of Narciso Rodriguez, which is behind me here, um, the whole lineup actually. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, they do do a musk oil. It's really um, nice. Narciso Rodriguez um, was launched, the, the original Eau de Toilette was launched in 2003, um, and it was it's kind of a reference actually now yeah. for a kind of modern day musk in perfumery. Mm. Um, and what the perfumer did is he put musk running through top, middle and base. Yeah. Um, when they, w when we get trained on fragrance, mm. quite often they'll say, right, the top notes are this and the heart notes are this and the base notes yeah. are this. When we got trained um, all those years ago on Narciso, mm. they just keep talking about a heart of musk. Yes. And the heart of musk is, um, really what's in the musk the oil, oil the oil um so i'm gonna um there's no spray so i'm gonna just uh, dab this one on um do you wear this i love this um i wear it i've also put it in my hair before mm. like in the ends of my hair i've put it in the bath before mm. as well because it's nice as a oil mm. um it's quite different to the actual perfume though yeah isn't it? it is but the reason why i've picked it out is because again it it sort of personifies that smooth yeah. softness cocooning yeah. nature of musk the kind of some of these synthetic musks they can be very enveloping and very comforting mm. um almost like sort of i want to say a layer of snow yeah. you know when snow falls and it and not slushy snow but like proper yes. fresh snow powdery snow mm. 
and it's giving that kind of blanket yeah. that sort of calmness and sort of silence uh -huh. there's, there's not much Still. sparkle in this yeah. Um, and I quite like that. Yeah. Um, and what it was based on was an Egyptian musk oil that the designer, Narciso Rodriguez, used yes. to use, you know, in this formula, you know, exactly as you've seen me do, all over his body. Yeah. Um, and when he came to create a perfume, he said to the perfumers, I want my version of yeah. Egyptian musk oil. Um, and so the perfumers yeah. um, have came, come up with that. Yeah, I mean, it's also actually uh, classified as a sheep pro as it well, is. isn't it? The fragrance, yeah. um, because it has other classic things mm. like patchouli and mm. amber, and mm. as well as the uh, musk. And so it's a kind of modern sheep pro, mm. but definitely the musk um, makes it very kind of sensual, yeah, but is. understated. It, it's, it's sensual in a calm way, yeah. um, and in a reassuring way, yeah. and in an intimate way. This is the La Pantera essential. It's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> In that way. <laughs> so there we go. So hopefully that's um, shared a little bit about musk as an ingredient with you. Yeah. Um, let us know whether you wear fragrances that contain a lot of musk or mm. um, whether you like synthetic musks, um, yeah. whether you've got any of these fragrances that we've been talking about and your opinion on those yeah. um, or others to introduce us to. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already and then um, you will see our videos every week in your box. <laughs> you will. Um, thank you very much and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.